You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. Genesis 1, Beginning Right Beginnings are often important, and the first chapter of the Bible is clearly important. Just the sonorous opening, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz, ve'ha'aretz haita thohu va'vohu. Just the sound of it tells you that this is something that matters. As you read on into the chapter, you catch the echoes, the phrases that recur. You catch the pattern of the seven-day week, or if we're talking about the action, the six-day week. All of these things and other signs clue you in that this beginning is important. Actually, I'll argue some other time that chapters 1 to 3 of Genesis are important, that together they serve as a kind of preface to the Bible. But for today, just chapter 1. When I'm looking at this chapter with students, I often get them as an exercise to write down what was created on each of the days. And if I'm doing it on the whiteboard, I make a point of putting the days into two columns. Days 1, 2 and 3, and then days 4, 5 and 6. And what you notice when you do that is that on day 1, what's created is light, and on day 4, it's the luminaries. That on day 2, what's created is the sky and the sea, and on day five it's the birds and the fish and other creatures that live in the sea, and that on day three it's the land, and on day six it's the land creatures, animals and humans. There's a pattern, form and function or filling or something. It's a clue that this chapter is patterned, and when there are patterns things are going on. Then there's the pattern of the seven-day week. Beginnings, endings and middles are often important. What's the middle of a seven-day week? Well, it's day four. And what's created on day four? The luminaries. Why are they created? We're told in the text that's unusual. For most of God's creation we're not told why. For the luminaries we are told. Not merely to divide day from night, though dividing is important in this chapter. Let them be for signs and seasons, days and years, verse 14. These lights in the sky provide us with a calendar. Why were calendars important in the ancient world? Well, they were important for agriculture, but they were also important for worship. The rhythm of worship in every community was governed by the calendar, in Israel particularly by the movements of the moon dates of Passover, times of Sabbaths, all the rest. So, right at the centre of the seven-day week of creation, worship. And how does the week end? It ends with Shabbat, the day of worship, the day on which God rests. The whole of creation is centred and organised around worship. The other thing that's going on in this chapter right from the beginning is that we are being reminded time and again in overt and subtle ways that the Bible's God is different. The other creation stories of the ancient Near East all involved conflicts between many gods and one god winning. The biblical story is totally different. When the time comes to create, God says, Let there be light and there was light. Yehiur va Yehiur. It's as simple as that. No one else is involved. When it comes to the sun, moon and stars, or gods in other societies round about, they're created to provide a calendar and a clock. They're thoroughly demythologized, to use a word that was trendy in the last century. So, in this chapter, God and God alone creates. No one else is involved in any way, shape or form. And the pinnacle of God's creation, though that's another story, or rather another post in this blog, is the creation of humans. So, a world made for worship, and a world with one God, creator of everything. That's chapter 1 of Genesis and the beginning of the Bible.